Hey guys, how you doing? Chad again. So this is part three, texturing. Um, so there's multiple ways to texture. I'm showing you guys some simple at home methods. Um, if I was going to recommend anything, I recommend you purchase stamps, um, make your own stamps, purchase stamps. Uh, Mike for Nelson uh, makes some great stamps. Same with Rockscapes. Um, both both of those companies, you can look them up or look them up, and you can get you know stamps from them direct. Uh, I highly recommend doing that. It makes things a lot easier. Um, so I'm showing you guys some makeshift methods. One is your stipple brushes. Okay, this brush has been dipped in in wet Portland, and then you let it dry and you build up nodules on it. Okay, the other one is is just a, a regular bristle brush some spray foam on it uh, and then what I do is I dip it into you know Portland or concrete and I get a, a texture this is a, a easy way to make texture this is how I've done this feature so I stick with those same methods I don't I don't divert from them I, I don't change them otherwise it changes the texture of the rock so we showed you what we did for our shape this is very very simple guys again and Mark, I want to show show them, okay? Again, everybody, this mud has been down maybe 10 minutes, okay? And when you look, this mud is really soft, okay? It is not hard. Um, you can texture at certain points of it. This is my pre-texture. I do this right away. Um, and then I move on and I go to another area and then I'll come back to this area when the mud starts to set and I can work with certain things. Um, and we're going to show you that stuff too. So we're going to show you, you know, at certain times what it feels like, uh, why I wait for it to be at that point, which is critical, um, and the effects that you get at those times. So right now we're using these two brushes, primarily this one, um, I don't know, maybe $10 in cost. So it's pretty, pretty affordable. Um, I don't use any mold release agents, nothing. I use water. Okay. So I just take it, I dip it in the water. I don't want it saturated, but I do want it wet. And all I do is I just, I touch down and I just give myself texture throughout it. I move it in different directions, use different parts of it, because again, you don't want to become repetitive. Um, I do leave some troweling, you know, marks, because I want that effect, um, you know, especially when I'm looking for it to be slick. Uh, I like these because you can get the faces a lot easier of some of your, your work. Um, but all I'm doing again is just kind of touching little areas um, so that I can get my pre-texture down and it's important that you don't change your shape you know the re you want to do the you want to do the processes with the minimal amount of work you know after the fact so when we do this we're doing it so that when we start to carve the work's already done we're doing it now and all we want to do is just kind of clean it up and the, and the rock is done so i use this one and i get all my rock to be consistent with some texture okay um again you got to be smart you can't be you know slamming at this it is wet mud the more that you touch it, like I explained earlier, is the more that it wants to move on you. It wants to sag. So I'm, I don't know, I'm maybe doing, I mean, you can see I'm one, one, two fingers and I'm barely touching this, you know, and, and because it's so soft, it's giving the texture that I want. Okay. So I kind of move around again. I try to get a little bit of texture on, you know, the areas that I want. Try to minimize a lot of my trowel marks. You're going to have them, but we're going to work on that after. We're going to show you how to get rid of those um, without doing a ton of work. Okay. But right now, I just want to get my texture in and keep everything consistent so it looks consistent and this should be done by your team where everybody can do the same thing 
and you wouldn't know one artist from another artist uh, that will make you guys efficient so all right so I've done my basic texturing with stipple brush number one now I'm going to use my nodule uh, bristle brush and again I've got a couple different sizes you know one's got bigger nodules one's got you know small nodules and some of these that I have I mean they've got massive nodules okay so um, you got to be careful you know when you use these these are great for later down the road but right now I do want to get a little bit of impression on this so I'm going to just do it in random spots I'm not doing it as much as I did it on uh, with the last texture back so this I just in my uh, get a close-up so they can see what it actually does so when I use this I'm just trying to get random areas so that when we paint it we're getting a really cool effect in holding color but I don't do this everywhere um, this can you know this is just kind of a random extra detail I just kind of sporadically do it it's not an everywhere thing I'm just again it's really for coloring purposes I think it gives a good effect um, so I just kind of pick random areas to do it for when I color. Like that right there, zoom into that. That right there, when we color that, is going to look really, really good. And hopefully I can remember when we color it to make a video and come back to this area and, uh, and show you guys what it will do. Um, makes great texture. So. All right, so we're done with this. And what we'll do now is we'll come back after when the mud hardens up and I'll start to show you guys some different effects on you know how to clean up everything and just start to get a finished product here all right thanks again remember to subscribe design house on YouTube